Hello, it's Helen from Journal with Purpose and welcome to my vlog for January. It's the first time I've recorded one of these properly, so I'll be really interested to hear what you think. It's been a crazy busy month for me. I've had the opportunity to work with some really great stationery brands. I've been to workshops, I've hosted a workshop, uh, worked on my new product launch and also a magazine submission. So I've tried to film as much of it as I can and I really hope you enjoy the video. Right at the beginning of January, I was given the opportunity to work with Schaefer and they sent me over these two dotted journals along with some Schaefer and Cross pens. And these journals are slightly bigger than I'm used to working with. They're just bigger than an A5 size, but I got on really well with them actually and I definitely enjoyed having that little bit of extra space. So they sent me across this lovely fountain pen, along with some other ballpoint pens and also a calligraphy set. And the project they asked me to work on was creating some pages in both of the journals and sending them back to them for them to be able to take them around to different exhibitions and shows to be able to actually display some of their products in use. So in this video, I'm going to share a little bit of what I worked on with them. So in this first journal, I've already completed the pages. I started off by creating a bullet journal key at the front. I then created a monthly cover page and quote, followed by a calendar for January and my weekly spread with a Dutch door. I also included a habit tracker and some tips for keeping a journal. And in the second notebook, I've completed most of the pages, which are duplicates of those in the first one. But I filmed me creating the tips for keeping a journal page. I love projects like this because I was really given free reign to create whatever I wanted as long as it was just representative of my usual style. And the paper quality was fantastic as you've seen when I was flipping through, nothing came through onto the other pages at all. So I'm starting off by creating this clipboard and then I also sketched that beautiful silver pen that they sent me. I thought it'd be really nice to have that on the actual journal page itself. And I also thought it would be good if anybody was looking through the journals at one of the shows to be able to just quickly read through some of those tips that I've included for getting into a sort of regular journaling routine and practice. I started working on this project over the Christmas break and finished it off during the first week of January and it's really exciting for me to know that my journal pages are going to be on display at different stationary shows over the next year. So I've added some colour using pencil to the clipboard and pen and now I'm using that really lovely silver pen to add in my notes under the tip section. Once I'd completed both journals, I posted them off to Schaefer and waited for their feedback. Fortunately, they were really happy with the pages that I created. I still get nervous when working with brands because I really want to show off their products in the best possible way. But uh, yeah, thankfully, they were really happy. It's Wednesday the 8th of January and I've just finished another project. In December I was contacted on behalf of MT Washi to ask if I would be interested in doing a project for them. They're doing some exhibitions next year and they wanted to have a range of people's journals to show how they use um, the MT Washi tape. 
So I was asked to complete three double page spreads. So I've used this beautiful washi tape here to create a monthly layout and it's my usual kind of setup for key tasks, social media and review. I also then used this washi to create my gratitude log and habit tracker. And then I decided to use two of the plain washies and tear them and layer them on top of each other to show how I'd usually do my weekly layout in my bullet journal. And I also use some washi tape to add a journaling card to the side of my page. So I'm about to send this off. It's really exciting to know that it's going to be shown in an exhibition in Japan and all over the world. So I'm really pleased. I've already got two projects done so far this month. So I finished the Schaefer project and the MT Washi. And the next thing I'm going to be working on is the launch of my new product range. All of this has just recently arrived with me. And I need to get my skates on because my products are going to be shown on Hachanda Craft TV this weekend. And I need to get some samples of pages in use with these products over to them before that, so by Friday. So I need to get these done today and tomorrow morning and in the post quickly so that they can be shown on Craft TV. So the products that are included in this new launch are some stamps. So that's the Fresh Start Planning Stamp Set. I've also got the Fresh Start Journaling Stamp Set. You can see some of these are already slightly used because I did some test stamping with them over the last couple of days. The Health and Fitness Tracker Stamps and possibly by the time this vlog goes up I'm hoping I'm going to have set up my Health and Fitness Bullet Journal for 2020. So you may well have seen these in use. My florals and motivation stamp set. And I'm really enjoying using these. So you've got a blob here, which if you use some ink pads on it, you then get a nice flat colour and you can stamp this one over the top. And again, you may well have seen these in use by the time that my vlog comes out. Two different sets of stencils, which probably aren't showing up too well because they're white on a white background. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, there you go, that shows it a bit better. And this is to be able to create some lovely text backgrounds with ink pads and all sorts of different patterns on your journal. And this one is for I guess kind of more functional stencils. You've got some of the loose sections in here to be able to layer them inside the template. So we've got the tag shapes and different patterns and quick stenciling for flags. And your kind of indicators and page markers. And also this pack of really pretty papers. So I'm probably not going to be filming the process of me getting the journals ready for Hachanda just because I know that I'm in quite a rush and I've got to get as many pages done as possible. But hopefully if I remember I will do a quick filming of some of the journal pages that I create. I've now finished creating my journal pages using the products from my new range. So I'm about to send these off to Lou, who's going to be presenting them on her chanda. So I wanted to have a play around with the stamps in this set. So I used the, the background colour was created using this stamp here, and then I've stamped this one over the top. And these are some of the pages that I've completed before using other products in my range. And this one I really like with all the different tags and elements in there. So that's that one finished. I also created a page in 
this journal and I used a similar effect I used the smaller stamp like this and then doodled some flowers over the top used some of my washi tape and stickers and also some of the paper from my paper pack and stencils so for this I used this stencil here with the different dots and lines on it to be able to just create a little space for notes on there and I also created some pages in this as a bullet journal so my cover page I also did a health tracker and this is it's kind of a practice run for me this one because this is something I want to set up for myself properly this year and that was using this stamp here along with the letters and the tick boxes and I also then created a January page again using that black background for the flower and then used some of the bigger stamps as well so I've used the floral stamp here and also the little dots and the quote stamps for here so they're all done which is a huge relief so I'm getting those off in the post today so they're all ready for her chanda and on the table today my next job is looking at my magazine commission so I do some work for Simply Lettering magazine every month and my commission for this month is to do a Dutch Doors Focus Masterclass. So you want two double page spreads, one as a kind of more basic Dutch Door and then one that's a bit more advanced. And they've given me some inspiration images there. So I'll be working on that today and taking photos um, each step of the way. So I won't be able to film that because I'm going to be taking lots of photographs so that that can be then written into a tutorial for the magazine. I've just finished my pages for my magazine commission and I'm running really late. I had to ask them for an extension, which wasn't an ideal sort of start to the year, but where well, I'd just still been feeling ill and had loads of work to catch up on and I was really lucky they'd said yes, no problems. So I've completed my pages in this Rodia dot book and I was asked to do two Dutch doors. So I decided to create one that looks pretty much the same as my normal weekly layout in my bullet journal. And I've used some stamp stickers and washi tape from my own product range. And I'm really happy with how that's looking. So I photographed that at each stage of when I've completed each bit of it for the tutorial. And I'll now post this off so that they can photograph the main image for the magazine. And I've also completed a double Dutch door spread and because this magazine will be going on sale right at the end of February I believe um, I thought it would be good to do like a March opening page to give people some ideas for things they might want to create in their own journals so I'm really happy with how they're looking to try and make it easy for them once it arrives with the magazine publishers I always put some little tags on the pages just so they can quickly find the latest kind of spreads that I've done in there and there's quite a few in here that I've completed for previous magazine submissions so this is when we were looking at new year spreads um, habit trackers um, that was another Dutch door layout that I did for them. So I'm really pleased that that is all finished and I'll be sending that off in the post today and just finishing typing up my tutorial and my column for the month. I thought I'd share with you some of the lovely new books that I've got recently. These two I asked for for Christmas. And this is The Joy of Watercolour, 40 Happy Lessons by Emma Block. And it's absolutely gorgeous. All kinds of tips on watercolour, lots of different styles. And I've started working my way through some of these in my own sketchbook. And I'm really, really pleased that I got this. It's absolutely gorgeous. Everything from plants to people and food all sorts of beautiful watercolour paintings in there. 
I've also got this one, new botanical painting, Harriet de Winton. And again, I've started trying this one out. These florals are just beautiful and exactly the kind of style that I'd like to be doing more of. And I love how it's all broken down step by step, even which lines you need to put in pencil and where you need to, what sort of size brush you need to be using, where it needs to be wet on wet paint. So it goes into lots of detail. And I follow Harriet on Instagram. I found out she actually lives not that far away from me at all, which I, I didn't follow her at all until I got the book. And I think that she's completely sold out of this book on Amazon. She's done fantastically, but they've got more stock coming in in March. And I will leave links to these books down below if I remember, just in case there's anything here that you are interested in getting or having a look at. Creative journaling, this, um, I think I pre-ordered it back in December and it released in January. And this is by, on Instagram, the DIY Day. And I've, I've followed her for ages. I love all the different projects that she does. So lots of different ways of being able to add different creative elements to your journals. So I haven't spent much time looking at this one yet, but I'm really liking the look of it and all the different styles that she uses. And this final book here is by Jane Foster and I followed Jane on Instagram for ages. That's how we met, but she actually lives in the same town as me and I'm lucky enough to have met up with Jane a couple of times for coffee now. And if you've watched anything like Kirsty Allsop's Handmade Christmas, Jane was one of the judges on that. And she's also been featured on the Dragon's Den recently because she was the designer, if you saw it, behind the Dino Ski Wear range. So she's absolutely fantastic. I love fabric. I've got loads of it lying around the house and it's not something that I've done enough with recently. So I loved the idea of looking more into the sorts of different things I could create with some of my scraps of fabric. And also it's got screen printing in here, which I'd also love to have a play with at some point. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing the insides of my new books that I've recently got. I'm always on the lookout for books. I love them along with all of my kind of digital learning that I do on Skillshare and watching YouTube. There's just something so peaceful for me about having a lovely book to be able to sit and look through in the evenings. Today is the 23rd of January and I've had two things recently arrive in the post. First off, I've had this box from Faber-Castell. I've got the opportunity to work with them this month and by the time this vlog goes up, there should be hopefully an unboxing either up on my channel or about to go up and they've sent me their latest glamour box. And in here, I've got some gorgeous metallic highlighters. So I can't wait to swatch these and give them a try. And they've also included some empty washi tape and pencils too. I'm particularly liking the look of this brilliant ruby and also this pearl rose. So that's something I'll be working on hopefully over the next couple of days, getting a proper unboxing of that and also some swatches and playing around in my journal with them. And also today I've had some other products arrive for my um, new product range. So I had the Fresh Start range launch this month and these were just some of the products we were waiting for. So I've got these lovely stickers here, which I'm really happy with. I created these on a watercolour background. And so we've got days of the week, the numbers for your dates, and also some of these watercolour flowers. So I'm really happy with those and I use loads of stickers in my journals. So I can't wait to try all of those out. There's also a second pack here. And these ones I'm hoping to use very much with my kind of health and fitness and 
those sorts of things and looking at all of my planning. So this has got um, relax, exercise plans, deadlines. It's also got lots of these little um, different symbols in here, which will be great when I'm trying to track healthy eating, exercise and relaxation. And these tie in really nicely with the stamp set as well. And then some lovely spring leaves and flowers. So I'm really happy that they've arrived and they're looking just as I'd imagined they would. And then finally, I've got these washi tape packs. And these are really handy for just being able to tick, um, to tuck sheets inside the front of your journals and in pockets. So you've got these different designs and they're all in um, different widths as well. And I can't wait to use those as I'm moving into spring and getting lots of spring themed pages in my journals. So I'm going to be trying to create some spreads with this um, over the next couple of days, as well as doing the project for Faber Castell. On the 23rd of January, I'd booked myself onto a modern calligraphy workshop with my mum. I'd seen that it was being held above a local art gallery up in their workshop space and it was being run by somebody called Lindsay from Wild Sea Calligraphy. And I follow her on Instagram and absolutely love her style so I thought it was too good an opportunity to miss. I've been dipping in and out of modern calligraphy for quite a while now but I've never actually attended an in-person workshop so I really wanted to just have that experience and also get some feedback on how I was holding the pen and could improve my sort of general style and technique. I found it so useful. We did lots of kind of drills to get warmed up and also we did lowercase and uppercase alphabet along with forming words and joining all of the letters together. It was only a couple of hours, but I feel that we learned so much in that time and it's definitely given me the bug now to start practicing it on a more frequent basis so that I can include more modern calligraphy on my journal pages. On the 30th of January, I was invited to run a workshop at Colt Pens. And if you haven't heard of Colt Pens, they're a fantastic online stationery retailer and they sell a huge range of different pens, pencils, notebooks, you name it really. I've been lucky enough to work with them for some time now and the workshops I run there are just for members of their team. And that's one of the things that I really love about working with them is that all of the staff want to get to use the products and really get fantastic product knowledge so that they can help anybody out with their inquiries. So my theme that I was set for the workshop was botanicals and we used a range of different products but we mainly focused on the Tombow ABT watercolour sets. So I showed them how you could put the ink onto some plastic sheets and then use a water brush to add it to your page. And also we did some spritzing of that watercolour to create kind of that splotchy watercolour background effect. And we used copies of my book for some doodling inspiration for those flowers. And it was just such a fun session. It's always really relaxed and everybody has different styles. But you can see from their pages that they create, they're really talented and just so passionate about what they're doing. So it's definitely always great fun to go and run workshops over there. I'm thinking of filming a tutorial on how to use ABT brush pens as watercolour or perhaps do a blog post about it. So if that's something that you'd be interested in learning more about, then please let me know in the comments section below. Before I left Colt Pens for the day, I asked if they would be kind enough to let me do some filming in their warehouse. I absolutely love it in there. I've been lucky enough to walk around quite a few times now 
And for me personally, it's better than being in a sweet shop. And they said, yes, no problems at all. So I thought it would be really interesting for you to see all of the different stationary supplies that they have. So I'm going to leave you with just a bit of music for this bit. So you can just enjoy looking at all of that gorgeous stationery. So I really hope that you enjoyed looking at all of that lovely stationery just as much as I did. Thank you ever so much for watching my January vlog. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions or feedback, then please do leave it in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed this video, it would be great if you'd leave it a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, I would love it if you would consider subscribing. Thank you ever so much for watching. I look forward to speaking to you really soon in the next one.